Madam Chairman, I'd like to add my voice <clears throat> to what you just echoed in Senator Pryor that sequestration as it's set up would devastate the Department of Justice, our ability to defend ourselves and destroy the military, and surely to God we can find a better way to do it uh, than that. So uh, I think you're dead on. This is just an Ill, Ill conceived idea of cutting money uh, blindly, in my view. Uh, now, uh, you were in South Carolina a couple of days ago, is that right, Mr. Attorney General? Uh, uh, yesterday. And yesterday. Well, we glad to have you. Hope you spent money while you were there. I did. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> but uh, the National Advocacy Center, Advocacy Center in Columbia, you visited. Uh, what would you tell the committee about the National Advocacy Center in terms of being of value to the nation? It is an invaluable um, resource for us. Did y'all hear that? <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I mean, it is. It is an invaluable resource for the training that goes on in the Justice Department. Uh, it is one that, you know, I, I think could actually be expanded. I'm concerned that we're not interacting with our state and local partners to the extent that we once did in doing training um, with them. We're trying to bring into uh, the Advocacy Center people from the defense side as well. Uh, it's where people learn to be good trial lawyers, learn uh, a variety of skills, learn their ethical obligations in addition. It's, uh, it's an invaluable resource. Well, we appreciate your visit, and it'd be a place where, you know, cybersecurity is the, probably the issue of the 21st century, and whether it's a crime, an act of war, it depends, on, I guess, who's involved, but a lot of local law enforcement folks probably have no idea how to handle this, and it'd be a good way to uh, kind of educate the country as a whole. And the collaboration between the University of South Carolina <clears throat> and, and the NAC, I, I appreciate. And I want the committee to know that we took about two or 300 Department of Justice uh, jobs out of Washington because after 9-11, we were worried about having every part of our government in one city. And we moved those folks down to the South Carolina and Columbia. And you leased a building from the university. It saved about $35 million. So I just want to applaud you for trying to be creative to decentralize DOJ so that in case we're ever attacked here, we don't lose all of our, uh, all of our national assets, and it was a way to save money. So. And we also have that relationship with the university about the rule of law um, component as well, and I think that's been a good synergy. To my colleagues, you know, I've been to Afghanistan and Iraq like many of you, and we're trying to develop a rule of law program in Iraq, Afghanistan, Africa, you name it, without some basic rule of law no country can develop. And all the lessons we've learned the hard way from making mistakes, but finally getting it right in many ways, we're trying to create a center at the University of South Carolina where those who've been overseas can uh, share their thoughts about what worked, what didn't. You could train before you went. Department of Justice, Department of Agriculture, Department of Defense. This is a team. This war requires a team concept, and we're trying to reach out to the uh, Islamic world and create partnerships with lawyers and attorney generals and judges in the Islamic world so we can understand them better and they can understand us. And uh, I'm excited about it, and I appreciate your, your support. Uh, now, Justice Scalia came out yesterday or the day before talking about he thought it would be wise if we looked at our federal criminal code, particularly in the drug area and see if we could uh, reform it. And I think he's right. I think we've federalized way too many crimes, creating uh, work for our judiciary that could probably be better handled at the state level. And what do you think about the idea of revamping the federal criminal code and looking at maybe uh, undoing some of the over-federalization? Uh, I've asked, when I came into office, I, I've set in place a number of working groups um, to look at uh, that problem, that issue. Um, are we bringing the right people into the federal system? Are the sentences that we have for the crimes that are federal ones um, appropriate? Are like they, crack cocaine, and we finally fixed that, we, but that was just sort of an, uh, an indefensible sentencing disparity. Right, and I think the bipartisan effort that um, resulted in the lowering of that um, ratio from 100 to about 16 to 1 was, um, was something that was long overdue and I think it was a great example. People don't focus on it, but it was an example of, you know, Republicans and Democrats getting together and doing the right thing, not only for the system, but something I think was morally right um, as well. And an area where we may disagree, we'll talk about the law of war later. <laughs> we don't have time here, but uh, the recess appointments uh, made by President Obama uh, a while back to the NLRB. <clears throat> is there a situation similar to that in, in the history of the Senate or by our previous president of appointing someone to a federal agency under those circumstances that you're aware of? Well, I mean, if you look at the 23 page, I think it is, 23 page report by OL, the Office of Legal Counsel, um, they go through a variety 
of um, precedents. They look at the laws that exist, tradition, and the conclusion that they reached was that given the length of the, uh, the, uh, uh, the recess, 20 days or so, uh, that the appointments were, in fact, um, appropriate. This is obviously something that the courts are going to ultimately decide, but I think that the OLC opinion um, was accurately um, actually described. I think Senator Alexander will have a discussion with you about that, but I, I take a different view, but uh, I'll let him discuss that with you. And finally, just to, to note, I think uh, maybe it was last week we had a plea bargain with a military commission detainee who was one of the uh, KSM uh, close confidants, and I know Mark Barton is the chief prosecutor, and you got a good defense team down there. Uh, I do support Article Three courts for terrorism trials when appropriate. I just want to acknowledge your support for military commissions in appropriate circumstances. And uh, with your help, I think we've got these things up and running. And uh, I look forward uh, to more action coming out of Guantanamo Bay to get some of these people through the legal system. So thank you for that support. And to all those at Guantanamo Bay doing your job, uh, you're doing the, the, the country a great service, particularly the defense councils. Well, I think that's right. And I, I think that uh, people you should understand that when um, I sent people down for military commission treatment that the uh, revised commissions that exist, um, as I said in my speech at Northwestern, have um, many of the elements of due process um, that we consider vital to the American system. I think we have great defense lawyers down there. Um, uh, the, the, the military system doesn't get the credit that it deserves for the fair way in which it deals um, with people. And under the direction of Mark Martins, who's a person I've known for you know, some time, uh, I think we'll be proud of the work they do. Thank you very much.